What's up guys? Tanner 5.9 high output here. Um, haven't done a video in a while, but uh, you guys are going to get a little bit of a series here. This is part one to, I guess, a two-part series that you'd call it. But um, I wanted to do a separate video on this in case anybody was looking for this fix as compared to my injectors and my trans, which I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Um, so, took the truck down, finally got injectors and the tranny built, but that's going to be in another video. But as it was at the shop, I did, I did have them go through my pedal issue which i've told you guys about and the the fixes i had told you guys they were they were legitimate i had asked the shop guy i said you know i did this i did this and he did this and he said honestly for this truck coming from canada and there being there being you know just a lot of a lot of um corrosion on stuff that everything i did definitely did help it but what we found out was um there is a massive connector it's a uh chassis to body connector i guess all the wires that go, anything from the chassis to the body um and the pedal goes through that so as you guys know if you guys you know get these trucks unless you were working on them you know right when they were brand new then you'd know when the plastic was still somewhat pliable but now they're you know 10 15 plus years old you know mine's no seven um the the clips break i mean anybody who's done headlights you know they they break and what i have to show you guys in this quick little video here before i do the big one which will be just to follow on this if you guys are waiting on the channel um the issue actually was the full issue was the big connector but the pedal also being a fleet vehicle is what I can figure out from this vehicle before. Being a fleet vehicle, the, you know, this thing, this thing idled a lot. There was a lot of stop and go, all that. So the pedal was definitely a, a good sign to replace. Um, batteries are always a good thing to replace. If you have anything, you know, to fix and you're not sure and your batteries are more than like two or three year old, two or three years old anymore in this climate, the way we are with just how the quality of things are check your batteries check the batteries can test good like i've said before but check your batteries and if they're not a decent quality battery to begin with that whole what used to be a seven year rule which i believe is like a four year rule now if they're not a decent quality battery they're just some off-brand thing probably like two maybe three max I know a lot of guys will say batteries are made in only three main manufacturers nowadays, and then it depends on who slaps their sticker on it. Um, but I, like you guys know, I put interstates from Costco in here, so I know the batteries are good now. But let me, without further ado, show you what the actual issue was. So the actual issue was this connector right here i don't know if you guys can tell there is a fresh zip tie right there and down there what my diesel tech guru mass told me was that that was just a little loose but honestly nothing to the naked eye um but it was coming it was coming apart and like it was hanging there a little bit like it was it was still connected but as it got warm under the hood it um it would kind of just everything would expand and cause the connection to fail and that's why i was getting the uh the code the codes i was getting i think it was a p2121 and a p2127 um also that being said if you guys have aftermarket uh intake uh or not intake um the intake rams right right here this blue thing okay don't know if you guys can see the three little uh protrusions on that that's in case you guys ever want to add ex extra um, monitoring devices like boost gauge, uh, boost in tape, boost intake temp, like to see what the temp of the air is after it's gone through the intercooler. 
Um, this explains why I was getting the problem worse and worse lately. One of those screws had made its way out, and so I had a boost leak, which I, I could barely even tell, and the warm air, even though it's been cooled, the, it was still warm, it was pointing right at that connector. So he put a new... Um, Put a new plug in there. They put a little bit of RTV, make sure they don't run out. Put some zip ties on those connectors since the plastic has broken. And I've been driving this about two and a half, three weeks. Haven't had a single code, no hesitations, no nothing. And it's been fine. So if you guys do have this problem and none of the other things that I had suggested that had fixed my problem for a temporary amount of time... If none of that fixed it, do check that cable. If it has any 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 give, any anything, push that sucker together as hard as you can. If you need an, an extra set of hands, grab the wife, grab a buddy, and have them put a zip tie on it. Put another zip tie on it like I showed you guys there, and do that, and you should be all right. Assuming that you have replaced everything else, because... Like I like you guys know, I've been hunting that issue down for the last probably two, two and a half years, and you know, as far as a, a DIY, as far as a home mechanic, the plug was not damn near dangling. So it's like it's one of those things you you look at, you're like, oh yeah, no, that's fine, it's connected. But oh well, you live and you learn. I really hope that helps somebody out there. Um, what it costs to do injectors and a transmission build is to follow here. Let me finish this video, get it uploaded, and you guys will see that here in just a few minutes. Thanks guys for watching. Stay tuned.